Once again, it's time to get your think on. I'm Sergey Brown, and this is the Crash Cart Rule. Crash Cart Rule. Crash Cart Rule. Crash Cart Rule. You know, this is a podcast about life, liberty, and the pursuit of some pretty crazy stuff. So hold on to your tinfoil hat, pull up a comfy chair, and explore with me conspiracy theories, politics, weird happenings, and some plain hard-to-believe true stories. Today, we're talking with Len Bear, one of the very few civilians ever diagnosed with Havana Syndrome. But there are many more affected. So yes, you really should care about Havana Syndrome. We are right back here at the Crash Cart Rule. I'm Sergey Brown. Today we have a very interesting guest. His name is Len Bear, and he has been attacked by the Havana Syndrome. He is one of the few civilian cases that has actually been diagnosed, professionally diagnosed, as having Havana Syndrome. Please welcome to the Crash Cart Rule today, Mr. Len Bear. Now, should I say Dr. Len Bear? You can just call me Len. Um, I'm a medical doctor, but, you know, I don't per, uh, currently work in the, uh, I, I work in the regulatory field. So, so, but, uh, once a physician, always a physician. Exactly. So, uh, please let, call me Len. You got it. All right. So Len, uh, when we had talked previously, you had mentioned that you had been diagnosed with Havana syndrome, which struck in 2016 in Havana at our embassy. And one of the reasons that they were hesitant to say that you had it was because you were not a government official. Can you kind of take us through uh, Havana syndrome and how that diagnosis came about? Okay. As, uh, as we all know from the news coverage, uh, late in 2016, early 2017, um, these diplomats and spies, uh, basically, um, um, who were in the U.S. Embassy uh, in Havana, um, started developing weird symptoms that nobody has ever heard before, and it can be it's a combination of sound uh, that nobody around heard um, around them heard. Right. Uh, they they literally had. Um, roommates that never experienced anything, uh, but the symptomatic ones. And it ne- by the way, it never happened in the embassy. It happened at the uh, uh, head, uh, at their um, home quarters. Oh, uh, at their apartment. Yeah, this right. is this is somewhat misunderstood. It, it never happened at the embassy. It always um, happened at their place of residence, either a hotel mm-hmm. or the residential apartments and it's continued for several months uh always very debilitating uh they felt dizzy they felt uh enormous head pressure and vibrations um the first reporting um of cnn by cnn also mentioned that not only noises were were heard but voices right. human voice um so At that point, the Department of State uh, contacted Dr. Hoffer, who is a prominent um, otoneurologist, so a neurologist specializing in the um, function of the ear, right? um, where where the gravity organs are are, um, situated. And he examined them. um, He he published his findings. and um, that's how I actually um, stumbled upon this information because the same things started happening to me in the summer of 2019. So, um, and you're a medical been, doctor, and so you kind of self-diagnosed uh, yourself. As, I, I, 
I pretty much, I pretty much did. Uh, when I was going to Dr. Hoffer, I was ninety percent confident, confident that this, this is what it is, because there's nothing in the medical literature, subjectively or objectively, there's nothing like it. Right. And a lot of critics that of, um, you know, saying that Havana syndrome is a, is a psychogenic mass hysteria, and right. blah blah, they simply don't un- don't understand that this is a new constellation of symptoms and findings that the medical community has never seen before. And this is what Dr. Hoffer emphasized in his paper. He diagnosed uh, Havana syndrome based on the severe uh, damage to the vestibular organs. Right. Because vestibular vestibular organs are um, 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 situated in the inner ear and they're couple of organs and and they um they're responsible for up and down and 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 sort of sort of the lateral gravity and and uh, they're all filled with water so so why is this um hypothesis of uh pulsed directed pulse microwave um energy as a as the most plausible causative effect is still is still on the table because it causes cavitation in 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 liquids. Right. So, so these organs are basically filled. They, they, these organs are kind of a uh, swim in this in this liquid, and the cavitation in fact is something. It's something sim- similar to a diver's disease when they come up. Right. The and compression it bubbles up, and and the bubbles actually damage this. Uh, vestibular, also called otholytic organs. Right. So it's kind of like so, getting the bends when you're when you're diving. Um, my question yeah. uh, here would be: Was there any permanent damage to anyone that that initially had it, or does it just kind of come on and go? Do you have any any damage? Does it is it something that is it like a headache and it just comes and goes away, or? You say the damage to the vestibular organs is that permanent? It is permanent, and I have per, per, permanent damage uh, uh, on one of the sides. I have a hundred per, percent loss of function. Oh wow! Uh, vestibular organs. So, but you, but you compensate it with the uh, you know your visual um and 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 other things that brain is capable of but if you if you don't if you if it doesn't go away in 12 months it's considered to be permanent right. and i have a permanent my actually my my repeat test made just over a year after the test that dr hoffer did um showed show showed progress showed that it, the severity increased right uh, so yeah i have permanent uh, uh brain damage specifically to the autolytic organs and i and i also have other uh, uh damage to the neural networks um is um do uh these patients uh the the initial two thousand patients that dr hoffer um examined have permanent damage my Common sense and medical experience uh, says um, yes. Yeah. Yes. And so we, I, I know that you mentioned something about patient zero. What was the medical outcome of patient zero of Havana syndrome? Well, the, uh, the, there was an interesting article in the Zeit magazine. The ger- a group of German e- investigative journalists followed the um, Havana syndrome development and they. Um, told us in that article about so-called patient zero, the first patient affected by it. Right. And and it is clear now that they were in the process, whoever was doing it, uh, they were in the process of calibrating their instrument. And so the first patient got so hit so hard that he lost vision and um um, auditory function, so he's oh, basically wow. blind and deaf. Uh, we're going to pick I that up a little bit. We're coming up on the end of our first segment, but we're going to pick up patient zero when we come back, talk a little bit more about Dr. Hopper, and we will talk a lot more about Len Bear when we come back right here on the Crash Car Pool. I'm Sergey Brown. We 
are back to the Crash Cart Rule. I'm Sergey Brown, and today we are speaking with Havana Syndrome experiencer, Lynn Bear. And Lynn was just telling us about patient zero, what had happened, and also with some of Dr. Hoffer's other patients. But patient zero was suffering. At what cost did patient zero pay for having this, Lynn? He lost his vision and he he lost his uh, uh, hearing. Uh, and so was that permanent? Uh, partially, partially it was recovered because uh, the uh, brain always finds a way to kind of... Right, it can patch its uh, way around. Yep. Yeah, there's neuroplasticity. But initially he was blind and deaf. And what it suggests to me, and, and, and there were, you know, another couple of dozen patients in Havana. And what it says to me, and and this is purely speculation, I, we, 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 we talked about it yeah. a little bit, that I'm at least a speculative person, but this really suggests that other, it was a process of calibrating uh, these neural weapons on the real human subjects. It's just like your microwave at home. You turn it up too much, you'll fry whatever you're putting into it. So something more delicate, like human organs, uh, are going to take a lot less directed microwave frequency than, say, uh, a brick, right? I mean, so evidently they just hit them a little too hard and and fried those organs a bit more. So, so, I'd like to make to make a, a little note the regular microwave and the energy that um, we've been um, damaged by are quite different. So you can, you know, um, you can take a microwave apart and you because it's out of the stainless steel and the and and uh, and um, it will damage you. It right. will damage you definitely. But the microwave, the microwaves, like any radio waves, they go every other direction. This is why, exactly. you know, we have radio stations that yeah, it just goes every every single way. This is a directed. It means that it forms a beam that can be directed at one's brain, like a laser beam. Uh, okay, exa- just, exactly like a laser, but laser is formed with uh, a, a light bar. Yeah, the, the, the photons. Right. These are waves, but you can still uh, arrange them so they will form a beam, and then it's pulsed, uh, which is very important because uh, microwave heats up the tissue. Mm-hmm. But if it's short, very short pulse, it um, it will. Um, without burning the uh, surface of the skin, wherever it's directed to, it would it will produce a short thermoelastic effect. Um, so like a uh, expansion and 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 uh, of the tissue and then cooling off. So just at the this pulsing is very important. Mm-hmm. And one of the one of the uh, experts that I talked to, um, he said the reason, why you uh, feel the vibrations and and a person next to you does not is not because of the specific microwave um, frequency. It's the pulse rate of uh, this energy. So that pulse rate is synchronized with your brain frequency. Wow. And it's all done in lifetime. So, in, in, so in, this is not, by, well, I mean, essentially yeah. what you're saying is, is that you are a targeted individual. They've figured out how your brain works and they're targeting that wave to affect you. Is that correct? That is correct. And we, we, we really need the, the, the major misunderstanding that uh, uh, people have about this Yes, they talk about it's a neuro neuro weapon. Uh, it it p- potentially so the National Academy of Sciences reviewed multiple hypotheses, and they said the most plausible is a uh, 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 directed pulse microwave energy. And so the question is, is it intentional? And the answer is definitely intentional. Right. If it's done with intent, 
there's intelligence behind it. Mm -hmm. And if there's an intelligence behind it, artificial or, or human intelligence, it means that it is capable of deceit. And so, so the, the uh, findings that we have and, and, the, and the specific features of these attacks, we cannot conclude with confidence whether it's designed to deceive you right. and people who investigate or it is a feature of the actual weapon. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm very confident that not a single single weapon and single fre frequency is used. It, it, it utilizes multiple uh, ways to affect your brain. I remember uh, in so 2016 when it first happened, uh, one of the one of the questions that was asked is, you know, is somebody standing in the next room pointing some, uh, you know, pointing a weapon at somebody, or or is it something further away? How far away do you think that this can be? And if you say it's not a single energy beam. Uh, how does that work? Is it two? Is it three? Is it five? Is it a grid pattern? Right. So uh, once again, I'm not a physicist, not an expert. So what I'm saying is a my best explanation and speculation based on the things that I heard from the experts. Right. So some experts uh, say if it, if it's a so there's a there's a causative agent which is that specific kind of energy which you can't catch walking down the street. It's not like Wi-Fi. Right. It's not like Android. It's a designer specifically designed to to target and damage your brain. So, right. um, so that's the causative agent. And then there's delivery system, like you, like a virus. You can inject it. You can you can uh, you know inhale it. You can so different delivery methods. Mm -hmm. And so the experts who um, who's thinking is that this is a ray gun type type situation says that uh two three miles away you can you can you can still uh, achieve a beam that is uh Len, um, if you can hold that thought right there we're coming up on the end of our second segment and we of course for those of you listening on the radio you know why we segment this program out I'm Sergey Brown. This is the Crash Cart Rule. We're talking to Len Bear. Remember, go ahead and keep those emails coming to me, Sergey at the CrashCartRule.com. We'll be back in two minutes. If you are just joining us, we are talking with Len Bear, and Len is one of the very few people who has been officially diagnosed with the Havana Syndrome. Now, Len, when we last left, we were just talking about how how that that attack can happen and how there's not probably just one beam, but maybe a number of them. And are they are they shot from the next room over is it uh you know a mile away is somebody standing next to you how does that happen you mentioned that it could be up to the a couple of miles away can they shoot it down from a satellite that's a very good question so um the satellite hypothesis is um is definitely a, a plausible one the uh definition of um, satellite technology has increased so dramatically that you can pinpoint a single cell wow. from a satellite. Uh, in, in, I don't remember if we, in, in the ninety in the seventies they demonstrated that that they can read a license plate of a car uh, from a satellite. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been fifty years. The science does not stand still, especially military science that has unlimited budget. And we don't really know where that black budget that that the CIA received exactly. where what project it you, uh, you know it actually goes to, but um, fifty years ahead, imagine imagine what technology you had fifty years ago, and then think about what you have today. Exactly so the resolution, the resolution, the capacity, um, the capacity to identify. It's not just someone's brain but a single neuron 
in your brain. You can do it from the satellite. I have heard and, uh, that we now have technology so great that we can read the date on a dime from a satellite. Well, that's that's nothing. That, I mean, cell, cells are much smaller. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah. and this is if that's it, what they're telling is, us. Yeah, exactly. But there's also another way to deliver it, and it's uh, something called HARP. I don't know if you heard that expression. It's very a, familiar with HARP. A, yeah, H A A R P. It's a it's a land based phase array a radar that sends and receives a uh, signal. It was uh, there are about five of them um, uh, on the planet, and it has full coverage. What it does, though, it it doesn't it doesn't just work by itself. It bounces off the ionosphere, mm -hmm. which is a which serves as a concave magnifying glass, and so that signal it's a it, it, it's a just like with satellite. Um, it it is two way street. It receives information and it sends information, mm -hmm. and so this is a very plausible mechanism how this information is delivered and a specific person is targeted. Um, most likely, the you can identify people by by their specific brain uh, frequency. Um, every molecule has a frequency, like your DNA right. uh, has a specific resonant frequency. It's like it's, it's like a tuning fork. Mm -hmm. It will resonate if the frequency is right. Obviously, it's more complicated with um, um, organic molecules, but nevertheless, anything made from matter has a resonant frequency, and so it will resonate. So if you if you send a signal of uh, of that frequency, you your your molecules will start start vibrating, and and that's one of the possibilities. We we really don't know much about it because this technology is shrouded in government secrecy, right. and we know that the U.S. government has been working on this for years, decades, and and once they started making some advancement, it just that information disappears from the from the from the public coverage, um, and um, but every newer weapon experts tells us from Dr. Giordano to Robert McRae to Armin Christian. These are these are all people and some that I cannot um, um, name, right. and also the whistleblowers, the, the Robert Duncan who actually. Uh, was part of developing this technology, and then when he found found out that it was used against American citizens, he quit and he he went to Congress with a testimony, and they completely the, the intelligence committee completely ignored ignored it. So and that so, begs the question: Is this technology an American technology that is? being used or at least tested on Americans because we know that that the other Havana syndromes have have happened in American installations around the world. And then we have like, you know, 20 college students that come down with the exact same thing as well that aren't anywhere near an American installation. So so, so is it an American test? Or is it an American? Are you know? Are they purposely targeting people now, just to say, "Hey, let's let's pick that." You know, were you in the right place at the wrong time? Really, it's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I once again don't want to speculate, but you ask me, is it possible that um, um, the parts of U.S. government is uh, using people, uh, federal employees? CIA agents and mm -hmm. diplomats and civilians as test subjects for the newer weapons that they so much desire. Uh, it is possible. It is also possible that it is a non-government, uh, some kind of international car cartel that has access to this technology. Right. Because we we heard from the CIA director Burns that uh, they couldn't find a a state actor, and and this wording is so peculiar that exactly. there's not a state actor 
that uh, we could find involved in this. Mm -hmm. So interpret at your own will. Right. I mean, is it a non-state actor? Is it something? Uh, is it the deep state actor? Outside of any nation state. Right. You know, the, the one of the reasons that uh, that I uh, look at that is because when you mentioned HARP, right, those of us who who follow chemtrails and the massive spraying in the sky. And I've got a number of doctors that I've had on you know, We we talk about that, how that heavy, heavy chemical that they spray or the heavy metals rather and chemicals that they spray in the sky. Then they use a billion watt harp station. And my understanding is that there are over a hundred harp stations now around the world. Billion watts heat up the ion ionosphere. You can either superheat or super cold an area if you heat different areas and allow that, you know, that area of, of pressure in, right? If you drop that and then you're changing the jet stream, you can di direct that beam anywhere and my question that i'm leading up to it makes me think that that uh any number of people can be involved it could be a side effect but if you're saying that it's you know it's targeted to that particular human's vibration it seems like it's very targeted also uh does it have we know that the graphene oxide plays a big part in what they have been spraying, especially since late 2019. And graphene oxide is in the, in the, uh, you know, COVID vaccines. We, we know just from a recent German study came out at that vibrates at a certain frequency. Could it possibly be that they have dosed populations with graphene oxide or, uh, or another nanoparticle and then are vibrating that inside you to create the Havana syndrome? It's possible. Uh, graphene oxide is so um, promiscuous. It, it gets in your body, it lodges, it lodges itself in, inside your neurons, uh, uh, penetrates uh, blood-brain barrier, lodges in the neurons inside. And I'm not familiar with any method how you can get them out of your uh, nervous system. And so they serve as antennas. They just magnify signal. They just make the job easier. And so if, if it's in every single one of them, then we are all potentially targets. Um, and wouldn't that be you, the perfect weapon? Well, it would be definitely, uh, an easy way to control, um, 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 what the population think, uh, right? You know, there's a there's a uh, there's a connection between Havana syndrome and mind control, and I'm not making it up. This is I I spoke to the experts that specifically uh, brought it up that that this is just a tip of the iceberg. Uh, it is uh, really what's what's below it is so much bigger than we think mm. um and it does include elements of mind control um which is exactly is what the mk ultra program you know has been about you know how do Correct. we control that mind and mk ultra it uses directed energy weapons to achieve that is this is Havana syndrome the next evolution, uh, the next iteration of uh, you know of the MK Ultra program? Have they really stepped on something that they say, "Oh, we know now that this works"? Although patient zero suffered hugely, well, the the yeah. rest the rest of the people are experiencing uh, you know symptoms on a wide variety of uh, of levels. It's it's absolutely frightening when you can just at a moment's notice stop an entire population. That That is uh, um, very terrifying. And I can tell you that Havana syndrome, because of its overt nature, because people who are victims of it, they know what's going on. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it made... It has been made clear to them that it's been done to them. 
uh, mind control can be done without the the sort of this degradation of the brain. So, so the same neurotechnology that can in, enhance our brain function can be used to damage our brain function. And so, so what we now call Havana syndrome is a part of the brain degradation program. It's a slow kill. People age faster. I. It, no, I'm not. telling you, it sounds so much like the vaccine, what's been happening with, with COVID, long COVID, and the vaccine. We're going to pick more of that up when we come back. Coming up on the end of our segment, I'm Sergey Brown. We're talking with Len Bear about the Havana Syndrome right here on the Crash Cart Rule. If you want to hear more of our shows, check us out at thecrashcartrule.com. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Crash Cart Rule. I'm Sergey Brown. We're talking about the Havana Syndrome, and there's some really odd things going on with it. I have Len Bear, who is a, a targeted individual and has been suffering at the hands of this very dangerous... What is, is it a disease? Is it a condition? Len, what, what do we call it? And is there a cure for it? There's no cure for it, as far as we know. A uh, uh, rehabilitation program doesn't work. It's a brain. It's a type of chronic brain injury. It's um, um, a lot of doctors are trying to frame it as a functional neuro- neurologic disorder. When kind of uh, there's initial trauma and then just brain generates this sensation. Right. This is absolutely not. And um, so it's a chronic brain injury. Um, to um, aim to degrade a uh, neurologic function of the target. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, some are doing it faster, some are doing it slower. I um, seem to be on a very fast track program because I have these attacks daily several times. They're debilitating. I can't tolerate them as much uh, what, as I Can used you to. explain... What those attacks are for the people listening is it is it just a headache? Uh, is it a sore muscle? Uh, is it is it crippling? What is that attack? And does that vary? Yeah, it varies by duration and intensity. The uh, most interesting feature is sudden onset. It's like somebody turn on the switch mm. and you start vibrating, like it's really every molecule of your body your head vibrates and there's enormous pressure and i was trying to to describe it and and the best metaphor i came up with is that your head um feels like a water balloon in a beehive at the same time Ooh. so this is the strangest sensation it's crippling i, I get absolutely dizzy. i cannot walk the other day it, it, it happened in the parking lot in front of my building. I kind of made a scene, but I, uh, it, it made me scream out of my lungs. I, this mm. is intolerable. And, and then it just goes away just like that. Uh, and then uh, it takes me, you know, an hour to kind of recover. I just had one this morning uh, for a couple of hours. And then um, now I seem like I'm, you know, speaking okay. Yeah. Uh, but an an hour ago, I was I was ba- I could barely find words to you know to express myself. So dizziness, um, confusion, um, instability. Like you, you, I can't stand on my feet. I have to. I I, I use a cane now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I you know, hold on to the walls. I prefer to lie down because, you know, standing up, you just don't have any, right. any, any ability to maintain yourself upright. So is there a it, way what, to protect yourself from it? it can, can you use a no. fair day cage? Can you uh, wear a helmet like, you know, like a, a super villain does. So, yeah. you know, Dr. X doesn't get in his brain. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but, but this subject mm-hmm. You know, yeah. sounds crazy. Well, the penetration power of this technology is so great that, I, and I tried 
over the years all kind of shielding and they do not work in fact when you use shielding the attacks intensify so i stopped using shielding because it just it just a waste of time and money and effort mm -hmm. Do you think that's because it's holding that attack in or because they're dialing up the the attack to get through the shielding? They're, dial, they're dialing up the attack. So no matter what, you, you're you going to get it. So uh, this is a sentient might. being. I'm sorry to interrupt, but so this is a sentient being. Somebody's actually watching this attack happen in real time in order to right. know what's going on. But not necessarily human. Every, exactly. Every, everything animated and i i um have good reason to believe that this is also automated and there's AI a, and the, the ai is running this program and this is what people don't understand that innovation and creativity does not exclusively belong to people with good intentions right malevolent creativity is just as powerful and just as deceitful as as the good one. There's a, there's an expression um, that the generals always uh, always fighting the last war because they apply the um, the current thinking to clearly novel threats, mm -hmm. and this is a novel threat, and so it needs novel thinking so knowing that intent known about intentionality knowing about the intelligence that that's behind it, it you, we can't just treat it as like like another environmental factor right. because it's done with intention it's done uh with intention to harm and done with intention to deceit um so uh to uh, and I want to emphasize this: the government, and these are not my words. Doctor, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Attorney Mark Zaid, who is representing federal clients uh, of his with Havana Syndrome, mm -hmm. repeatedly said in his interview to New York Times and other agents, news agencies, that the government does not want to recognize any domestic cases of Havana syndrome. Forget about civilians. There are they're, they're right. cases when FBI agents themselves have been harmed by it and the government does not want to recognize it. And wow. so basically we are, they're not serving us. Mm -hmm. They're not protecting us. I, my case have been uh, uh, um, forwarded to the Department of Defense, to the FBI, and nobody is investigating it. And I want my government to investigate my case and to protect me and all other victims. You would think they would I want to, right? I mean, it, this is this is a targeted weapon. You would think that our government would be all over that unless they already know about it. There's a good chance they already know about it. Yeah. The certain parts of the government. I don't think the Congress Congress people know about it. I don't think they know much about anything. Yeah. They're they're really kept in the dark. I mean, yeah. there's a, only a few few congressmen and senators that really understand what the reality is going on in America. We had talked a little bit about graphene oxide and graphene hydroxide how it is sprayed. We know it's in chemtrails. We know that it is in the COVID-19 vaccine. And there has been a lot of speculation about 5G and its ability to target down to an individual if they chose. Is that a possibility that that 5G technology and the rollout came the exact same time that COVID did? And 5G symptoms are very similar to what you're explaining about Havana syndrome. Is there any correlation there? There's a correlation. Um, 5G operates in a very low frequency uh, microwave of the microwave range, exactly the same frequencies that the brain, uh, the human brain operates, that the single digit uh, uh, hertz. And um, and um, 5G is very uh, AI driven, very AI driven. Correct. However, the difference between the effect of 5G on one's brain and one's nervous system 
in the Havan syndrome is the intensity of brain damage. So 5G by itself, even though it, it affects the brain, it doesn't, the, the damage does not reach the level levels uh, seen in Havana syndrome. So my guess is, yes, 5G is related, but Havana syndrome is has more intensity to bring the actual brain damage and brain degradation to the target. Right. My curiosity stems from speaking with Dr. Anami Halcha, who her practice is treating COVID patients, long COVID patients, and patients suffering from the adverse effects of the vaccine. I did reach out to her yesterday, just mentioned you and the possibility because she had sent me an article a week or so ago about this German company that has discovered that the graphene oxide and graphene hydroxide that is now in the blood from both breathing it in from chemtrails and from having it injected in a vaccine, it actually will build nanostructures. Then it can take those structures apart as well. So my curiosity, and I, I'm probably way off base here, but is it possible that 5G instructs these nanoparticles, the graphene oxide in your body, to build a structure and damage you for a little while to receive, right? Because you, uh, just like HARP, transmits and receives, and those are, are big disks that send out all of that energy. Well, a nanostructure can look exactly like a, a satellite dish, a receiver. It can receive and retain energy, and it can instruct those nanoparticles to do whatever they want. Just hearing myself say it, I know it sounds so sci-fi but then again we look at this extremely well done german study on the nanoparticles that are in the human body and they're building structures how are they getting that information what's going on if it is not being directed by you know by a low frequency microwave directed in microwave and because 5g is in any number of spots they can take two or three of those beams and find anyone any one single particular person and direct that energy beam to just that person literally you could be standing in a packed subway and be the only person suffering from the attack because it's that it's that well defined it's possible uh and it's uh i uh, the the fact that it doesn't it, it sounds sci-fi does not scare me at all yeah. because Havana syndrome sounds like sci-fi right and level of technology uh saying this is this sounds like sci-fi we should treat it as an acknowledgement acknowledgement of of one's ignorance and and maybe intellectual laziness yeah so it is a hypothesis that you just formed and i and the strength of every hypothesis is not because you have sufficient evidence, but because you cannot disprove it. Mm -hmm. This is why the Havana syndrome, the directed energy, um, um, it remains the most plausible hypo hypothesis because they cannot um, invalid, they cannot falsify it. So the the hypothesis remains just like the hypothesis. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the hypothesis you just formed. So it is possible. And I would like to see more evidence, but most importantly, I would like somebody to try to invalidate it. That's right. what makes the inability to invalidate a, 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 a scientific hypothesis makes the hypothesis stronger. And but that's just scientific thinking. I think we should apply more of it to. Um, to our daily living. Is there a think tank, an independent think tank that is uh, not government funded, not government directed, that is hunting down what Havana syndrome is since the Department of Defense, the FBI, the CIA, no one's getting back to anyone. And I, I did, uh, you know, my requisite study on this. It doesn't seem like there's much interest from our government in solving this issue when it comes to the public, will there be an institution that those affected and those not affected, right, that are interested in solving this equation, if you will, is that going to be happening 
Have you heard anything about that? As far as newer weapon experts, uh, every every single one of them is, except for the whistleblowers uh, that came through, uh, they all uh, connected somehow and fund, funded by the government. I know in Europe there's an organization called ICATOR mm-hmm. that is um, uh, playing a lawsuit in Belgium because of the specifics of the judicial procedures. You can actually... Uh, file a lawsuit and the and the judge and they will assign an investigative judge Ooh. to uh, rule over that case this is why they picked belgium right so this organization icator which i'm a part of um and provided my testimony unfortunately whatever happens in belgium does not necessarily affect the u.s uh, yeah. like citizens um I'm also uh, on the uh, advisory board of the uh, largest organization for targeted individuals and, and people suffering from Havana syndrome called targetedjustice.com. Uh, and it's uh, down uh, where you are, Sergey, in, in Texas. Oops. Good state. Uh, and um, the problem in the states is. Uh, any every time you file a lawsuit and um, you name a wrong defendant or or, or or it can if you sue the government it's a losing proposition. Mm-hmm. We actually two hundred cases filed in connection with targeting and Havana, Havana syndrome. Um, they'll all list it on on the website and they all been dismissed for one reason or, or another. Wow. So we understand that suing the government is a losing proposition. So I think the way out of it is to make it a political issue. So if it happens, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. And people saying, oh, well, you know, it, it just, it, it, I have nothing to hide. I, I'm nobody. I'm nobody either. Yeah. I don't hold any <laughs> secrets. Um, I'm just happen to be stubborn and medically inclined, and I know how to talk to physicians. And this is why I got this proper diagnosis that can be swept under the rug. Mm-hmm. And yet, still, neither the FBI nor DOD has any interest in. Uh, investigating my case. Well, we're going to have to have you back because we're at the end of our program right here. But Len Bear, can you really quick give us your YouTube channel? Uh, Len Bear MD. Um, I'm pretty sure. I, I my my main uh, 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 social media platform is uh, Twitter. Um, my handle is at p sardonicus. Uh, and I post uh, YouTube uh, links. I do media updates. I do uh, scientific reviews. I do conversations with experts, especially the ones who disagree with us. Yeah, there you go. This has been a very interesting episode. Len, if you want, I'd love to have you back. Thank you so much. Len Bear talking about the Havana Syndrome right here. I'm Sergey Brown, and this is the Crash Cart Rule. We'll see you next time.